Vitamin D is one of the most popular vitamins and supplements out there, but it is also one of the most dangerous ones when used incorrectly. That's because it can lead to unwanted side effects, like tissue calcification. High doses of vitamin D increase calcium absorption in the body, which, if not properly regulated, can lead to calcium depositing in tissues, arteries, and your organs. This can then lead to joint pain, cardiovascular issues, and even an increased risk of heart attacks. Another problem is magnesium depletion. Magnesium is crucial for converting vitamin D into its active form. High-dose vitamin D supplements deplete magnesium stores and can potentially lead to muscle cramps, fatigue, and an impaired vitamin D metabolism. And lastly, you also have other cofactors that can be depleted like potassium and vitamin A. Potassium is vital for muscle function and heart health, and vitamin A is essential for immune function and vision. Many people are already borderline deficient in them, and knocking them down even further will lead to all kinds of health problems. So that's why I want to show you how you can safely raise vitamin D without running into all of these problems. This is something very few people talk about online, but it will save you a lot of symptoms down the line. Let's start this video off by talking about how to raise vitamin D through sunlight. The first thing you need to understand is that vitamin D from supplements and vitamin D from sunlight is not the same. I explain this in much more detail in a different video, but the key difference is the sulfation. Vitamin D produced from sunlight is sulfated, making it partly water-soluble and easier to transport in the bloodstream. Vitamin D from sunlight is not sulfated and it is entirely fat soluble. This changes its distribution and function in the body. You also have differences in cardiovascular benefits. Sulfated vitamin D from sunlight supports cardiovascular health by helping in the relaxation of blood vessels and also by regulating blood pressure. You don't see this benefit as much in unsulfated forms found in supplements. And you also have the natural regulation aspect. The body can naturally regulate vitamin D production from sunlight and can lower the synthesis when it's necessary to prevent nutrient imbalances. This self-regulation does not happen when you take vitamin D supplements, which can lead to excessive levels and its associated health risks. A final benefit of sunlight is its potential for photobiomodulation and neurotransmitter synthesis. Sunlight stimulates mitochondrial function, so energy production inside the cell. It also helps the skin synthesize serotonin. This is because sunlight influences the level of tryptophan, a precursor to serotonin that can then be converted into serotonin. And this happens not just in the gut and nervous system, but also in the skin. Supplements don't do that. What that means is that ideally you want to get most of your vitamin D through sunlight because that's what our bodies are designed to use, at least primarily. We will get to foods and supplements later. The skin can synthesize around 10,000 to 20,000 international units of vitamin D after around 20 to 30 minutes of midday sun exposure in a bathing suit. During that exposure, cholesterol in the skin absorbs UVB radiation and that is then converted to pre-vitamin D. Of course, all of this will vary depending on factors like skin tone and the amount of skin exposed. And you also have the risk of sunburns, which you definitely want to avoid, of course. And then there's the problem that certain regions of the world don't get enough sunlight or not in a specific angle above the horizon. In such a case, you would then need to look for other sources, which brings me to vitamin D supplements and natural sources. If you want to get vitamin D from sources other than sunlight, I generally recommend low-dose supplements and or natural foods high in vitamin D. Low-dose would probably be considered anything up to 1,000 international units per day, sometimes a little more. For example, if you have bad digestion and nutrient uptake, or if you're taking high doses acutely during an infection. I know that many sources online say that this isn't enough and too low, but please bear with me. If you don't just take vitamin D, but also the necessary cofactors that we will talk about in a second, you don't need crazy high doses to increase your levels. Often what the body does is keep vitamin D levels low because it doesn't want to further lose the cofactors that are used up in the vitamin D metabolism. Many people believe they need crazy high doses, but they're really just deficient in something else. In terms of natural sources, cod liver oil would be a really good one because it also comes with a vitamin A, which is one of the cofactors 
that gets displaced in the body when you take excessive vitamin D. Just make sure it's lab tested because of the heavy metals we find in an RCs. And I have a video on the best brands and products out there. Other options would be quality butter, fatty fish, and egg yolks. But by the cells, they're usually not enough to significantly increase your vitamin D levels. Let's now talk about the critical cofactors and vitamin D metabolism that are needed and used up when the body processes vitamin D. The first is magnesium. Magnesium is essential for converting vitamin D into its active form. And magnesium is often depleted by high-dose vitamin D supplements. Most people that can't raise their vitamin D, even with high-dose supplements, are simply extremely magnesium depleted. Blood tests will not give you a good picture here because only 1% of magnesium is stored in the blood. Most of it is found in your tissue. The next cofactor we need to talk about is vitamin K2, and it's important for calcium regulation. K2 activates protein like osteocalcin, which help direct calcium to the bones and teeth, preventing it from being deposited in the soft tissue, arteries, and organs where you don't want it. By sending calcium to the right places, vitamin K2 supports bone mineralization and lowers your risk of tissue calcification. Most people are already aware of this, and you find a lot of combination supplements that combine vitamin D with K2. A third important cofactor is vitamin A. Isolated vitamin D supplements can deplete vitamin A in the liver, leading to a deficiency. I already said this before when we talked about cod liver oil, and it is also the reason why cod liver oil is so beneficial, because it comes with both. We don't know the ideal ratio between vitamin A and vitamin D, but in cod liver oil, it is usually found in a 10 to 1 ratio. That means for every 1,000 international units of vitamin D, cod liver oil has around 10,000 international units of vitamin A. The exact ratio can vary depending on the brand and source, but this 10 to 1 ratio is very common, and it also gives us an understanding of how much more vitamin A you need to balance vitamin D. Four is potassium. Vitamin D increases calcium absorption, which can deplete potassium because calcium is a potassium antagonist. Most people who are magnesium deficient are also potassium deficient because both are stored inside the cell. Potassium supplements are controversial, and you should get most of your potassium through natural sources like vegetables and fruits. The supplements are controversial because taking too much can be dangerous. But if you have a potassium deficiency or a borderline deficiency, low-dose supplements can make sense, as long as you stick to the recommended doses. And lastly, I want to talk about sulfur. This is something almost no one talks about, because the role of sulfur in vitamin D metabolism is so widely unknown. Like I said in the beginning of the video, sulfur is crucial for synthesizing cholecalciferol sulfate, so the sulfated vitamin D version in your skin. Whether isolated vitamin D supplements deplete your sulfur levels is not entirely known, but you need it anyway for healthy liver function, and most people are borderline deficient. So I would definitely make sure to get enough sulfur if you're taking vitamin D. Sulfur can be found in garlic, onions, and cruciferous vegetables, or in sulfur-containing amino acids, like methionine, cysteine, and taurine. In today's world of constant environmental insults, you need to make sure to get enough quality sulfur in your diet. It is very important. If that is not an option, Epsom salt baths or foot soaks can be an alternative. They provide both magnesium and sulfur and are very relaxing. Okay, to wrap up this video, let me summarize the key insights again. Raising vitamin D should not be done through extremely high-dose isolated supplements. Sunlight has a lot of benefits over supplements, and it is almost impossible to overdose, while avoiding sunburns, of course. If you decide to use foods and supplements, please take into account the necessary nutrient cofactors and nutrient interactions. In terms of minerals, we have magnesium, potassium, and sulfur. And in terms of vitamins, we have K2 and vitamin A that are most important here. Of course, always monitor your levels over time and see if you have other deficiencies or imbalances that need to be addressed. Some of them, for example, magnesium, can take some time to replenish. But afterwards, most people can reach optimal vitamin D levels without superdosing. 